Hey guys, James here with Waterford Business Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about refunds in House Call Pro and refunds that create a negative deposit or a deposit where instead of House Call Pro giving you money, they remove money from your bank account. This occurs when you end up issuing a refund, and that refund is larger than the credit cards that you take in the same day. So it ends up with House Call Pro removing money from your bank account instead of depositing money. With that being said, with the House Call Pro integration, all of your payments go into undeposited funds, and so do your refunds. So we need to end up reconciling them or making sure they're deposited through this undeposited fund screen. But in QuickBooks, QuickBooks does not let us make a negative deposit. So if we tried to save this right now, we did save and new, it's gonna give us this error right here of you must specify a transaction of the amount that is greater than zero. So when we are doing a bank deposit, it at least needs to be zero dollars or it needs to be a positive number. Since we have a negative number here, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of finagling. But before we do that finagling, I wanna make sure that we understand how all of this works here. So we're going to take a look at a refund from House Call Pro. And when we look at the refund from House Call Pro, it shows us it will have a customer name up here, and then it will show us product and service as services or your generic income account or generic product and service. Generally, that's going to be services or sales or something like that. So when you're refunding, even if you're refunding a product and service that you have previously mapped somewhere, it is going to refund out of your generic services account. And on your profit and loss, it will show up whichever account that services is mapped to. So keep that in mind. If you did, I'm going to use HVAC here as an example. If you have your profit and loss statement broken down by HVAC install and HVAC service, and you're refunding an HVAC install, and services is mapped to just generic sales, it's not gonna remove money from your HVAC install account on your profit and loss. It's gonna remove it from the sales account. So keep that in mind because we are gonna use that a little bit later on. When we come here to the bank deposit, the first thing we wanna do is create a normal bank deposit just like we would under normal circumstances with House Call Pro. And you can see a little bit more detail on a previous video that I did. But I'm just going to put this together real quick. And that transaction should cost us about $8.25-ish. Okay. So now we're removing our credit card processing fees from this account here. However, we also need to refund our credit card processing fees because while you're refunding this 1070 here, House Call Pro is refunding the credit card processing fees that they took out and you're refunding the total amount. So you're not out the credit card processing fees. So for that, we will want to go to the My Money area in House Call Pro. Unfortunately, I don't have an example of that for you all, but in that area, it shows you the amount withheld on each and every transaction. So when we're going to the refund area, we want to figure out how much this 1070, when you originally charged it, how much you were charged for that 1070. And instead of doing a negative number down here, we're going to do a positive number. So this 1070 would have been probably somewhere around $30 is what we're refunding there. So that is what House Call Pro is refunding for us out of this 1070. With that being said, you can see a little bit more detail in a video that I did specifically on refunds. This is going over getting everything to kind of zero out and make sense and work. So when we take a look down here, we're still in the hole or we're still negative by $773.25. And that's what House Call Pro would have removed from your bank account. So we need to make sure in QuickBooks so that you can reconcile that we have $773.25 coming out of your bank account. So to do that, we're going to receive some money in here for House Call Pro. 
and we're going to go to that services account because this is going to act as a holding account for us. And we're going to zero this out so that this equals zero down here. So we're going to put in that 773.25 so that now our deposit equals zero. Since it now equals zero, we will be able to save this. We're going to want to make sure we're going into the right bank account. And we're, we want to make sure that we've got the right date here. What this is going to do is this is going to solve the first part of our issue. However, keep in mind there will be an additional step. So we're going to save this. Whoop, not do that. We're going to save this. Perfect. And so now we've created that bank deposit. And if we go and we look at our bank register here, we're going to see that $0 bank deposit. But we need to have that negative $773.25 so that it matches to what actually happened in our bank account. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an expense here. And we're going to expense this to House Call Pro because we receive funds from House Call Pro to the same checking account or the checking account that the money came out of. We're gonna say that this was paid by credit card and it actually wasn't paid by credit card here. It was a direct transfer because this is you spending the money, not the customer spending the money. So you transfer this money back to the customer. We're going to choose that same income account that we chose. So whatever account you chose to zero out the bank deposit is the same account that we want to choose here. That way it ends up equaling out to each other. And we're going to put in another positive 773.25 because this will create an expense or a negative amount of 773.25. Now down here we want to make a note just so that we know in future something along these lines saying that this is the counter to the bank deposit with refund on 10 8 20 something so that you know what's going on so that if your accountant asks you your bookkeeper or someone asks you what's going on here that everyone knows we don't need to worry about any of this information if you want to tie it specifically to a customer you can but we're just going to leave it with house call pro here and then we're going to save and close this what this is now going to do is we're going to have this expense here, which is what actually hits your bank account for $773.25, so that now we have that negative number or that amount being withdrawn from your bank account. We also no longer have any of the transactions that were associated with that deposit sitting in your undeposited funds because we've selected them all and we've deposited them and zeroed everything out. And this isn't going to affect our income accounts at all because we've got money being deposited into that account and we've got money being withdrawn from that account. So these two will zero each other out wholly and totally. The one final step that you will have to do here is when you go to reconcile the account here, you now have this zero dollar transaction that didn't actually occur in the bank account. We normally don't want to see transactions that didn't occur in the bank account. However, since it's a zero dollar transaction, this is fine because we void checks all the time. We void expenses, things like that so that we have the record of it, but it's not affecting us financially. When you go to reconcile, you will need to make sure that you select this transaction to reconcile it. Otherwise, if you don't reconcile it, it's going to stay there for you to reconcile forever. Reconciling this is not going to throw you off because it's zero dollars. It's not going to affect your bank balance, your QuickBooks balance, anything like that. That's the great thing about this. 
So with the few steps here, we have gone ahead and created this, and the final step is for your reconciliation. So we've created the deposit so it's no longer in your undeposited funds, and we've gotten that in there so that QuickBooks will accept it, and then created the expense to make it match up with your bank statement for what actually happened. Make sure that you're going through and you're refunding those credit card processing fees and accounting for those credit card processing fees because you want this expense to equal exactly what happened in your bank account. Follow along with the My Money section in House Call because it will show all that information so that you get this accurate. If you need more help or have some other questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Waterford Business Solutions and we'll be happy to help you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.